If you really want to make it happen, you can't be spending your time ordering the right toilet paper. Unless, of course, you're head of TP. Now consider this. The opposite of imposter syndrome is just as insidious. In fact, it's worse. It's where we're doing way too much and not making an impact anymore. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of the Make It Happen show, where it's time for you to make it happen. In these implementation sessions, we're joined by an industry expert who will take you through in detail how to make it happen in your business. These are full of implementable actions, so get your pens ready, take notes, and be ready to apply these to your business. Let's get into it. Hello listeners, hello entrepreneurs, hello business owners. My name's Romeo Devlin. I'm one of our senior Elevate advisors at The Entourage. Uh, If you don't know what a senior Elevate advisor is, that's cool. Essentially, I'm one of our business coaches, one of our advisors uh, that help our elite Elevate community uh, basically get it done. Uh, I, I give a mixture of advice, I give a mixture of coaching advice, and I help them make it happen. Awesome crew. Look, I've worked with over 200 business owners since my time at The Entourage Uh, I've done a lot of work in sales leadership, in marketing, uh, and sort of just running in leadership teams in general. Um, So what I'm going to bring you today is a lot of experience, both from the real world um, and also from what I've seen in my time as a high-performance coach, right? What we're going to uncover today is is stuff that I find pretty powerful. It's one of my favorite things to share with you guys. Um, some comments I've had when I've, I've taken this exercise through with some of the, the members and clients that I coached before is that this is the best thing I've ever done for my business and life. Um, someone else told me, very few things have transformed me the way this did. Someone else said to me recently, this literally changed everything, Romeo. This is the best thing we've done. Right, so let's take things back. What am I actually going to show you? Well, I'm going to show you, first of all, what unlimited human potential looks like. Unlimited human potential. It's an amazing concept, right? Well, it's a myth, right? Let's just get that off the table. It's a myth. Like We see it in movies. I'm not talking about Superman, but I'm talking like Johnny Depp in The Singularity, if you've seen that, or Scarlett Johansson in Lucy, right? Lucy's a backpacker. She's caught up in a, a drug smuggling ring. She overdoses on this superhuman performance drug, CPH4. It unlocks the potential of the human brain, Like, it's an amazing story, but it's a myth, right? What we all have is limited human potential, limited human potential. And that's okay. That's what makes us human. It literally defines us as human, right? We all have potential, though, that we're not meeting, right? This is the untapped potential that I really want to uncover today, right? So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to give you the tools today. I'm going to give you some tools to reach the most out of your realistic potential, Right, so I've mentioned before, I've coached over 200 business owners and founders and, you know, business leaders, right? And I've done this myself. And what I've found is that the number one problem that limits people, no matter what their position in an organization, where they work, where in life they are, right? Well, let me give you a spoiler alert. It's you, right? Uh, I'm going to tell you why you're holding yourself back. I'm going to tell you why you're holding your business back. Right. Then I'm going to take you through the top three techniques and concepts that you can implement today or this week if you're driving to unlock the chains that are holding you back, that are holding the business back. Think about budgeting. Right? Nobody likes it. Nobody really likes it. Okay, I know a few people that like budgeting, but most people don't like budgeting. But it's like having a framework for your finances is one of the most fundamental things you can do to unlock your financial future. I'm not going to talk specifically about finances today, though. Don't worry. Think about sales too, though, right? Um, in a framework, not a rigid sales script that's inauthentic and stuck, but a framework is one of the most crucial and most importantly, replicable things you can do for improving your conversion in your business. But I'm not going to go too into sales today either. What I want to do, though, is flip this back to you and ask you this. Who is your number one employee in your business? Right? or the number one worker in the organization you're currently in. I want you to think for a moment about how they best use their time. Right? Is it important to you that they're super efficient and that they're doing the most important things with their time, what we call the HBU, or their highest and best use? Now, if you're a business owner, that should be you. Right? You're your most important commodity. 
you will be your best ever investment. You're also the biggest obstacle that you'll ever face. Right? But your time should be more valuable than anyone that works below you. Right? But I've got to ask you this. Do your calendar, does your calendar and do your actions back up what you're actually believing and, and wanting to have happen? Tell me if you've heard this. This was management guru Peter Drucker. He said, tell me what you value and I might believe you. But show me your calendar and your bank balance, or your bank statement, and I'll show you what you really value. Has anyone heard that before? The idea is this, right? And, and it's, it's important for you to understand, but the rest of our team, our friends, our family see this too. Right? Actions, my friends, do speak louder than words, especially when we're leading. Now, it really comes down to doing as I do, not as I say. If we want our teams to be more efficient, we need to model the way. We need to be the change. All right, now let's unpack how. Step one, what I want to do first is called a reality audit, right? This is the nitty gritty. This is what's actually going on, right? What's the name of this podcast? It's the Make It Happen Show, right? If you really want to make it happen, you can't be spending your time ordering the right toilet paper, unless, of course, you're head of TP. Let's get real. This is not HBU. This is not highest and best use, right? What I want you to do now, right, and you can do this right now. You can um, do it later if you want to. If you're driving, don't do it right now. Do it later. Right? But imagine if you're driving. Otherwise, do it. Map out the days of the week. Just draw up a simple graph. Days of the week and down the other side of the page, what I want you to do is increments of time. 30 minutes is really good. Right? I've coached lawyers who have done this in 15-minute increments. Some people go with an hour, but 30 is a really good start. Right? Really, really great starting point. Now, what I want us to do is to think about how you're spending all of the time in your week, okay? Think about all the meetings. Put all of your meetings just where they sit on those days, right? Anything else that's regular and booked. I want you to take anything that's regular and booked and just start putting it in roughly where they go, right? Start to think about the things you realistically spend time on. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you spend 30 minutes a few times a day, put it in. If you spend some time on sales, put it in. If you spend time marketing, planning, put it in. Calls you might make, put roughly when you're making all your calls in there. Client meetings, put when your time's are for client meetings in there. Just chunk them all in roughly where they go. Now remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. This has to be real. If you take 30 minutes for lunch every day at 12 o'clock, put in 30 minutes for lunch at 12 o'clock. If you take an hour, put in an hour. If you take two hours on a Friday for lunch, lucky you. Put in two hours on Friday for lunch. If you don't take lunch, don't put it in yet. Right? This is realistic. Right? What we're going to do when we look at this is hopefully start to see where our time is going. Now, this may still include things that are key person dependent, right? that rely on you, that only you can do. That's okay right? if that's, if that's the case. Now, there may also be things in here that we're currently doing, but other people can do. Right? That's okay too. All we're doing right now is doing a reality audit. We're understanding where things are at. Right? But now what I want you to do, if you've done that, if you've started to consider that, is take a minute and say, all right, if I was to hire someone else, if I was to take someone at my pay grade as CEO or as GM or head of marketing or whatever my role might be, right? whatever different hats I'm wearing, right? Remember, we might be CEO of a company, we might be the, the big entrepreneur, but unless we've got a big team underneath us, right, we're still doing all of the stuff, we're still a technician doing this uh, three days a week, we're still maybe delivering product, we're still doing some of our sales, maybe we've got someone on helping with sales, but we're still managing them. Uh, these are the hats we wear, right? You might have heard uh, on this podcast, we might have talked about the hats before, where we talk about being a technician, being a manager, being a leader, and then finally being an entrepreneur. So ask yourself this, if you're hiring someone to do everything you're doing and running the business right now, would you be happy with the way it looks? Are you still doing too much admin? Are you still doing too much technician? But essentially your pay grade is way beyond that. All right. Think about that for a second because now we're going to go to step two, right? The dream week. And I'm not talking about we're going to Maui, right? That's, that's a different kind of dream week. Right. What we're going to unpack now is your HBU and also something for you, which is really important, and I'll show you why. 
So your HBU, remember, this is your highest and best use. Right? We're going to look at that uh, first of all. Now, consider this. The opposite of imposter syndrome is just as insidious. In fact, it's worse. It's where we're doing way too much and not making an impact anymore. Now, this can also lead to imposter syndrome, where we're doing some of these tasks that aren't highest and best use, but our name's at the top of the org chart, and we're thinking, who's actually in charge here? Right? So we think we're worth more, we feel we're worth more, right? but our actions aren't really meeting our bank balance, like the example I gave before, or our calendar isn't really aligned with our ambition. Right? You want the good news? Well, we can fix this. Right? We can fix this now or again later if you're driving. Please don't try and map something out on your iPad or in your notebook while you're driving. Cool. All right. What I want you to understand in your perfect week is what it would look like, um, not necessarily unrealistically, but if everything ran as smoothly the way we would want it to run and we're getting it done, right? We're making it happen. So here's how we're going to map this out. Grab another little scrap of paper, grab another tab, start another axis and start to think about this first of all before we start mapping them into the week. What are the non-negotiable, the most important commitments, right? And let's just get these out of the way that others rely on you for. Your family, your partner, your kids, your dog, your hamster. But there's things in life that we've got to do, right? And it's not all business. Maybe it is for some of us, but for 99.99% for of us, we've got other commitments. Right? I'm not saying we forget about them and just focus on marketing strategy or that new project we really need to do or bringing in a new CRM or some new software or something we've been wanting to do for a while, but we're too stuck in the weeds. Right? Map out family first. Cool. Right? Just get it down. We're not prioritizing everything yet, but make sure we've got these things on the table. Now, I also want you to map out right? the three to five most important things you should be doing in your role. Not necessarily that you're doing right now, but you should be doing in your role. Think about if you're in the, the CEO seat or a general manager seat, what are the, the core accountabilities or the core responsibilities that you should be doing? Right? Let's see, let's list some of those out. If you're still a general manager or a CEO, but you're still doing head of sales work, right? let's also map out the three to five things that you should be doing for head of sales. If you're still head of product or if you're still wearing a technician hat, wearing uh, a manager hat, wearing a leader hat, that's okay. It's just you're really, really busy. I mean, that's why they call it business, right? Sometimes there is a lot going on, which is why this exercise is so important. We can't just be a great technician and not managing the business, right? If we're a business owner, if we're a founder, if we're an entrepreneur, one of our core responsibilities is running the business and everything else too. But you know, running the business doesn't happen or the business just runs us, which is probably why you're still listening right now, right? So once we've unpacked that, we've got what we need to um, commit to our family every week or every day, what the five most important job functionalities are in our role or in the two roles or three roles and the hats we might be currently wearing and juggling between. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to jump in here to let you know if you're enjoying this episode, it doesn't need to stop here. We've taken this episode plus all the other episodes and also video footage from the interviews and made it available for free. There's also a bunch of fantastic guides, tools and resources you can use to grow your business. To grab those tools, just go to www.the-entourage.com forward slash podcast. Right, let's get back into the show. Now what I want you to do is really, really important. I want you to note down three things you love to do. Three things you love to do, right? Things that make you tick. Things that give you oxygen. Right? Things that make you know you're alive, help you to function. Write them down, right? Now, now we're going to pick one of them right, that you can do every day, right? Or something that moves towards something that you love to do that just gives you a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of uh, more fire in your belly every day, right? Circle it. Circle it on that list. Right? If you can take one thing from today, it's really important that you take this. Right, Your plan is only going to work as long as you can still work your plan. Right, If you crumble, like the, the best laid plans uh, are going to see. Now, this is your golden ticket to be that little bit selfish. Remember, we've got the family taken care of. We've got a few things um, that we've outlined we really need to be doing each day and throughout the week for business. 
We've got to find that stuff that keeps us with the fire in the belly, that keeps us performing, whether that's some meditation in the morning, whether it's having a half hour lunch break or a one hour lunch break, whether it's just not back to backing all our meetings. So we've got time to breathe between our meetings, right? Whatever these things can be that give us a little bit more uh, presence, that give us a little bit more space to breathe, that just help us from burning out. Now I've seen it a lot lately. I've seen it through COVID. I've seen it as everyone's starting to come back from COVID, people are going on holidays and they're sick for the first week. Or people are telling me, oh, you know what? I actually don't do anything through the week, but I have Saturday mornings for myself. That's great. But let's just get that little one thing a day. It doesn't have to be a morning ritual. It can be a morning ritual. It can be at lunchtime. It can be at the end of the day, but something that makes you uh, know that it's all worthwhile. Right? We're going to get business sorted, but we've got to also look after you as we go. As we start to elevate, the rest of the team can also start to elevate to their highest and best use, which is also really cool. So here we go with step three now. We're going to look at a better tomorrow. We've done our reality audit, right? We've done our dream week, right? Now, think about this. 80% of a dream week right, is still going to be better than 100% of chaos, Right? If you're still living in 100% reactive, putting out the fires, you know, putting one pot to the back burner to put another pot, and you know, you're going to have a messy kitchen, right? But it's essentially what we're talking about is chaos, right? The business is running us. If we're going to flip that to running the business, right, to running our life, to have some, as Jocko Willink would put it, discipline that equals freedom, right? When we now we know what a dream week looks like. We don't have to live a perfect week. We just have to have as much of that working for us as possible. And if we could get even close to 80%, trust me, you'll be winning, right? So what does that look like? All right, question one. Look at what's going on in your reality audit week. Do I need to delegate, right? Are there things in here that other people could be doing that other people should be doing, right? Now, this is a slightly bigger discussion than we can really break down in its entirety today. So here's some steps to what you need to do there. Work with your team, right? Work with your business coach, right? If you've got a business coach, work with your mentor if you've got a mentor. Map out how to get unstuck, right? Get these processes you might have for doing some of these things out of your head, right? There's even uh, a teachable and learnable hierarchy for how and what we should delegate first, right? So uh, whether we unload admin, whether we unload sales, you know, and it's, it's case by case. It is a little bit dependent on our industry and where we're at in business. But this is where we want to talk to our team, uh, talk to our support network, reach out to a coach if you need some help from a coach and start to work at how we unpack and get unstuck. What do we delegate first? How do we delegate first? Delegation is going to be one of the keys, right? We already know why we want to do it. We already know what we're going to be doing and what we should be doing, right? So we just need to make that happen. Now, the second question right? Maybe we're already delegating a bit, right? But do we just need to be better at protecting our time? Do we just need to be better at protecting our time? If you can't delegate, maybe you just need some structures to be more unavailable, right? It's sometimes, right? I'm not saying be unavailable to everyone all the time. We don't want to live in the ivory tower of, of leadership, right? That's not going to help anyone right? We still need to be available, right? When appropriate, when we need to be, where we need to be, right? But what I'm talking about is creating some structures and creating some cadences, right? Planning these meetings, planning the agendas, planning our one-on-ones, planning for our team, right? So we're actually more present, and able to show up for them in the best way possible. So many people I work with, uh, and I hear this all the time, uh, I just need to be there for my clients. I just need to be there for my team, right? And that's true, but it's kind of like parenting. We need to let our team and our clients off the leash just a little at the right times. We need to have a structure and a plan for how that works. So what I mean by that is thinking about how we can engineer, how we can communicate that to them, and how we can set up to actually provide them more support than less because we're helping them make better decisions around that, right? Giving them a hierarchy of when they need to come to us. You know, maybe it's a traffic light system. Creating a little bit of a structure can go a long, long way, but also it helps people to develop some of their own ideas, some of their own solutions. They might come back around to you and actually say, you know what? 
I've actually, I was going to talk to you about this, I've actually figured that out now. Here's what I'm suggesting we do. This is also a good outcome, right? That's fantastic. Okay, so another thing you could use in there is considering the way your emails are mapped out, using autoresponders. Right? These are some of the tools you can use, autoresponders, labels and rules, right? using gatekeepers and processes um, so that nothing's coming through to you all the time. The idea is we can't be reactive all the time if we're going to be proactive. Right? And part of actually controlling our future and controlling our life, controlling our business, is being proactive, not constantly reactive. All right, those are the three steps. Step one, we've talked about doing a reality audit. Step two, we've talked about creating that dream week. Right? We've then looked at a better tomorrow, how we're going to bridge that gap and some tools around delegation and better protecting our time, right? Now I'm going to give you three easy steps to put this all into place. Step one, put it in your diary right now. I know this is probably going to take more than 15, 20 minutes, right? I'm a reasonable guy, right? Um, what I want to do is set you up for success. So give yourself 60 minutes. 60 minutes is really fair to run through the exercise above. Replay this podcast, pause, implement, get it done. Right, so take, take just a moment, only take you a couple of minutes. Now two, what I want you to do is create some accountability. Right? This is super important. Right? It can be a friend, it can be a family member, it can be a colleague. Right? It can be a, a business coach or a mentor like me. There's always someone to turn to. Right? If you're feeling alone, if you're feeling stuck, reach out to me. Right? Tell us how and when you're going to get it done. Tell us when you've booked it into your diary. Tell us what you're going to do. Tell us that you're going to show us. Commit to us. By writing it down, by putting it in your diary already, you're 42% more likely to make it happen. By telling someone else, by creating some accountability, you're actually 95% more likely to make it happen. And that's what we're here to do, right? Okay, now the third step here to getting it done, to getting it into action, is to get some buy-in, right? Remember, if you just disappear for three days and start focusing on strategy or your highest and best use, and you don't tell your team, they're going to think you're pretty lousy, right? That's just the reality of it again, right? So you need to tell your friends, you need to tell your family, you need to tell your colleagues what's going on, whether they're your accountability buddy or not. Once you've got a plan, you need to communicate this effectively, right? Um, you need some techniques, potentially, and some processes, like I mentioned above, with um, setting up some really structured meetings so people know when they're, you're available for them, right? So you can manage this change. Right? There's possibly a few more steps in managing the change and elevating uh, where you need to be. So as you elevate, they elevate. Again, if you need any more help with a delegation or specific techniques to protect your time, reach out to a business coach or someone for some more support. Um, reach out to me. Reach out to the entourage. That's what we're here to do. That's, that's kind of one of our, our strongest lanes, right, in helping businesses scale. Right? I'd love to see on the comments. Uh, if you've got the ability to comment on this podcast, depending on where you're listening or where you're watching, let me know what's working. Let me know what you're doing. Tag me. Tag me on social if you're putting some of this on your social. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me all over the place, Romeo Devlin. Um, tag in at the Entourage Official. Let us know what's going on at the Entourage, what you're doing. I've got members doing this who've seen it. They'd love to rally behind and support other people who are going through this process. And remember, subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already for all sorts of great tips coming up, um, great interviews uh, and great feedback on how you can really progress as an entrepreneur uh, and just the entrepreneur life in general. Awesome, guys. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe. Be better. But remember, do it as simply and as elegantly as possible. I'm Romeo Devlin from The Entourage. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Make It Happen Show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And it doesn't need to end there. We've actually gone and grabbed a whole bunch of extra resources for you. Behind the scenes footage, videos from this and all the other episodes, as well as show notes that you can grab for free. Just head along to www.the-entourage.com slash podcast and you can grab all those extra resources. Thanks for tuning in and I cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest on the next episode.